so let's talk about these uh, conducting nanocomposite foams that we've made and uh, well luckily we had the cover of advanced materials with it. So when you look in the literature there are, there are different ways how we can make a polymer type of foaming material and the easiest example is a coffee cup. So if you look at a coffee cup it's made out of polystyrene and typically what they do they make polystyrene beads via suspension polymerization and inside those beads there's a porogen which is either water or or um, a volatile organic compound, then when we release the pressure, it basically blows the bead up and you get kind of a popcorn type of structure and that then generates the right material for this white polystyrene foam. And everybody knows that a white polystyrene foam insulates better than an ordinary solid material and that's why it's used for disposable coffee cups. So another way how you can think about this is, well, how can we add complexity to these foams? And what we looked into for example, it's used emulsions. So emulsions, in that particular case, we have an oil droplet dispersed in water or a water droplet dispersed in oil. So when you think of water droplets dispersed in oil and the oil being a precursor to make a polymer, you can imagine that we want to maximize the total number of water droplets in that oil. So if we stack all those water droplets on top of each other, leaving hardly any volume left for the oil, so saying typically about you know, 80, 85% of water droplets. And if we then imagine that at the interface of the droplets we can arrange tiny little particles and stack all these things then on top of each other, then we can make a really interesting, uh, what's called a polyhyde material, which is layered with individual particles. And that's earlier work what we did, and you can really see that each of these cells are covered with individual particles, and we can create a local microenvironment with that. So we can have one of these pockets that have type A particles and one of these pockets that has type B particles and that's what you can see here in this overlay of refractive microscopy combined with confocal microscopy. Now what we what intrigued us is can we use ice crystals instead of droplets to arrange and, and assemble small particles in such a way that we can make an interesting foil. And uh, we looked in the literature and when you look back your bed mattress is made via the Talalay process and what that was done in the 1940s and what that basically did is you had a polymer latex which is polymer spheres dispersed in water it looks a bit like milk and it's also the stuff you put on the ceiling to paint your uh, to paint your house with a waterborne coating so that stuff gets frozen and when it gets frozen the particles get expelled to the liquid regions and then when you thaw it and remove the ice you'll end up with a porous material and for us that was a very interesting way of making foams. And then we thought in order to make this a fast responsive gas sensor we would have a, we want to have a soft polymer material rather than a really hard material that we can't really squeeze. But then the downside was if we would make a foam out of a very soft material when the ice would be gone and the, stu the stuff would be back at ambient temperatures it would just completely collapse and that's what you can see here. So if we, if we make um, a latex and then we freeze it at minus 210 degrees Celsius and then remove the ice by a process called freeze drying you can really see that you know we make a porous structure but there's no scaffolding and it's a soft material and completely implodes so the clever thing what we did is that we added a second colloidal component which were very small hard ceramic particles so in this particular example we use ludox particles which were 23 nanometer in diameter and the latex soft polymer spheres were about 300 nanometer in diameter. So now when we freeze the mixture of these two things, what we get, we get a type of size exclusion effect in that the small particles tend to be closer to the ice interface. We get an enrichment there. And the structure what you get then is a battered foam. So we have a hard composite material of both stuff in the middle and on the outside only the hard material, which prevents the entire foam from collapsing and it gives it this mechanical rigidity what we need in order to retain our porous structure at, um, at room temperature. And you can clearly see that here in this series of SEM images, scanning electron microscopy images, in which we go through and increase slowly the amount of small particles relative to the large particles that we use. And you can clearly see in the last picture you create a very nice porous material with very regular pattern in which you can imagine that gas molecules can diffuse through freely and that's exactly the material we used for this gas sensor. 
Now we have to add one step in order to make, to, to make this work because this foam has to be conducting. Otherwise we don't have a way of measuring that this thing can measure uh, yeah, volatile molecules. So what did we do? We added a third colloidal compound which was carbon black, colloidal carbon black of about 120 nanometer. And now we have this composite mixture in the middle of carbon black particles dispersed in a soft polymer matrix and then armored with these other small particles. And what you get then is that if you, if you expose this material to a gas vapor, the carbon black particles basically move away from each other because the soft polymer material swells up a little bit because it takes the volatile component up, creates a larger distance between these particles and therefore conductivity goes down. And you can see this in this, in this very simple lab experiment in which we attach a small bit of foam to two copper wires and we expose it to a droplet of toluene. So uh, above the vapor of toluene kind of swells this material and you can clearly see that the conductivity goes down and the, res the resistance goes up from, the, from that circuit. So to finalize this, we then integrated a tiny little piece of this foam onto a printed circuit board. And that basically is our cheap gas sensor. And as you can see in the last image, it works pretty well. It, it can sense organic vapors pretty well. And uh, so those results to us were pretty exciting. And now we're looking at ways of making this process, taking this process to the next generation and trying to find ways that we can sense one particular type of volatile organic compound or, well, nasty, toxic uh, material.